All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a quick walkthrough of the updated eCowbell device inside of Bitwig 2.0. So like most of the other devices in Bitwig, the biggest changes to the eCowbell is they've updated the user interface a little bit, as well as they've removed most of the modulators, so things like velocity modulation, timbre, and pressure modulation that we saw in most of the devices in, in the first version of Bitwig. So in this version, they've cleared that out. They've moved all the modulators over to the left-hand side of the device where we can add in any type of modulator we want to using these plus slots here. So the uh, eCowbell is laid out into a couple different sections. We have the generator section up top here where we actually generate the sound. Then underneath it, we've got our modulation sections where we've got a filter for modifying the output of the generator, a ring modulation section, our amplitude envelope, which is just a tack and a decay envelope, and then our global output section here where we can drop in additional audio effects and set the velocity sensitivity in terms of volume for the eCal bell, as well as adjust the global output level for the eCal bell. So the sound generation process starts up top at the generator section, where on the left-hand side we can set the relative pitch of our eCal bell. And we can have that either be fixed, meaning if I play a whole bunch of notes, it doesn't matter what note I play, it's always giving me the same one. Or if I click underneath that, I can enable keyboard tracking for the pitch of these generators. And now I can play melodies, but I can't play harmonies. It's only a monophonic instrument. So then the generators are comprised of two oscillators, and we can crossfade back and forth between those two oscillators using this slider on the left-hand side. So all the way on the left-hand side, we have the first one, which is always going to be set to the pitch of whatever we've either set using the incoming MIDI note, or if we don't have that icon enabled, whatever pitch is set by the pitch dial there. And then as we crossfade over, balancing between the two oscillators, and then moving over to the second oscillator, and the second oscillator has its pitch specified as an offset from the first oscillator. So we can retune this oscillator, but it's always going to be an offset of this one. So if we go back and I disable key tracking there, and we bring back in oscillator one, you can see as I move this dial or here as I move this dial, both of those oscillators are moving up or down. Re-enable key tracking there. Then we have a basic shape dial for morphing between two potential shapes. One is a little bit duller, so I'll start with just one oscillator here to make it simpler. One a little bit brighter, and some kind of space in between there. So roughly one on one side sounds a little bit more squarish, where this sounds a little bit more saw-ish. We bring back in both oscillators. So that's the generator section, and then underneath that we have the filter, which to my ears sounds like it's a bandpass filter, so as we sweep down we're eliminating high frequencies and focusing more in on low frequencies, and then reverse as we sweep up, we start losing those low frequencies and focusing on higher and higher frequencies, and then we can get all the way up to the top. And then we've got the focus or the resonance, which is how tight of a filter band are we working with, as well as how much is it boosting at our filter's center frequency. Which can even get a little bit almost into that self-oscillating space. Then next to that, we have our ring modulation section, and ring modulation is just amplitude modulation, so turning up and down the volume of our output, so the generators as passing through the filter, turning it up and down at a regular rate. We can set that rate with the frequency dial here, so if we start with something slower, right around 10 hertz, we can start to hear this. You can hear it kind of rhythmically changing its volume versus Steady. You can also hear that it's free running, so it doesn't care about when the note is triggered, it's just going on its own. And if we change that rate, it starts to move out of this space of being able to hear these individual ups and downs and volumes, 
and moves into audio rate and it just becomes timbral modulation. And then we can adjust the mix, which is just how much ring modulation is being applied to the output. Then next to that, we've got a basic amplitude envelope generator where we can control the attack and the decay of the note. So again, if I continue to hold this note, there is no sustain. It's just immediately dying away at our decay rate here. So we can have a really short, let's go ahead and get rid of our uh, ring modulation. We can have a really short attack envelope that's got a maximum of about 32 milliseconds. So very quick there, because again, this, the idea is this is supposed to be a cowbell, so percussive instrument. We're getting down to one millisecond, and then decay times ranging anywhere from 100 milliseconds to fairly long, nearly nine seconds long there. And then last but not least, our output section where we can add in audio effects, set the velocity sensitivity, so if I play softer or harder notes, are they louder or quieter, or are they always the same? And then the overall output of our e cowbell. So that's the e cowbell instrument or device. Fairly straightforward, great for making electronic cowbell sounds. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave any questions or comments you may have below. All right, thanks. Bye.